We are here with uh, Okeda Uboga from Toyota Kenya Limited. Uh, can you tell us today about uh, the new Prado and uh, what, uh, what it's offering in the market? Yeah. Thank you very much and welcome to Toyota Stand. As you can see, this one is the new Prado that we launched in uh, June this year. What the Prado offers you is that as you can see from the outside, the older shape one used to have like a longer shape of the face. This one is a much more sporty face. It's much more appealing. And then as you can see, the even on the hood of the car it has a scoop on it the scoop has on the car whereby now like um when the car is moving fast it separates the air now there's no resistance for the car on the way the the car is moving so number one on the shape of the car the car is very appealing aerodynamic so when you see the scoop of the bonnet being this way it helps the car whereby when the car is moving faster it repels the air so there's no resistance for the air coming into the car so that's one thing makes the car much more faster sometimes you know the air tends to like receive the movement of the vehicle that's you have the aerodynamic on the bonnet of it and then as you can see the headlights they are hyperbolic headlights whereby if you corner with them the headlights will turn with you they are halogen type so this one saves you a lot now like like on the road instead of you doing like the adjustment the headlights can adjust themselves on their own as, as uh, driving then another thing the car has is has something called a follow me home for example when you're driving the car and you get to a parking slot and you want to get to the house and it's dark you can program the headlights whereby they light for you as you are going up to get to a, like for 20 seconds and then they'll go off so they'll just light you away that's one of the things about the new prado as you can see yeah and then also on the headlights and you see the, the design of the headlights you still have also another aerodynamic design whereby even if air comes on it it still gets repaired so it's not only on top of the bonnet so even on the headlights we have that component that also helps the car because we realize one thing that um air, air affect the movement of the car a lot so as long as you have things that repel the air on the car like the bonnet the headlights now the car becomes much more faster yes and uh engine capacity just speak about the engine capacity the gear the gearbox uh, what what are we looking at in terms of uh, performance and uh, yeah yeah what we're looking at into the car the car comes with a three liter engine which is a 29 82 cc the car has a, a power of 120 kilowatts and then it has a torque of 400 newton meters what happens that uh, with a 400 newton meter stock the car is much more powerful so even if you are carrying all the eight passengers inside the car will give you a good talk for it yeah. and then another point is that uh, th this car is automatic yes but it's still a type tonic whereby you can drive the car manually uh -huh. you know sometimes like uh, you might over be overtaking an automatic always tend to drag so with this one you can shift the knob to the sequential bit and then you can either downshift or upshift the car to give the car much more power all these ones are incorporated on the gearbox so it's a uh, it doesn't have the paddle shift on the steering but you just use the normal gear yeah. to down to downshift it or upshift it you can drive it manually yeah. all the time yes Okay, uh, just speak to us about uh, the knobs and uh, what features are new in this side. Yeah, so now let's start now. When you check on the car, if you check the design of the dashboard, you'll see we have here over here this button. This one is called, it's called a crawl control. Mm -hmm. Crawl control works when you're going on a muddy terrain, on a rough terrain with a lot of uh, with a lot of gravels on it, a lot of rocks on it. Mm -hmm. So what happens with the crawl control is that uh, once you project the crawl and you put it on multi-terrain, the car will drive itself. Mm -hmm. And no matter how uneven the road is, from inside the car you not feel that unevenness yeah, yeah. because of the crawl, crawl system of the car. Mm -hmm. The car, the suspension of the car absorbs for that one. Even if the car leans on one end, the suspension for the car will cater for that one. Yeah. So inside the car will still be stable. So that's one of the things that you have over here about you call the crawl control over here and then multi terrain. Yeah. Multi terrain is that when the car is moving, moving about uh, like uh, rubbles, mm -hmm. rocks, multi terrain helps on absorbs the shock. You know, sometimes you know the car hits on it like this and you feel the impact. Yeah, yeah. So on this one, you not feel that impact. The car absorbs the impact on your behalf. That's why now we have the multi-terrain and the crawl control. And the other thing, like for this car, if you're starting to drive, it has a height control. Whereby, once you're seated in the car, is starting and you have already belted up, all the doors are locked, you can increase the height of the car to a certain level, or like a 20 centimeters or lower by the same same. But if I put in, the, if I increase the height control of the car, and then I'm driving the car at a higher speed of like 80 and above, the car will lower itself because of the center of gravity. The car, yeah, the car will sensor and lower itself down. So that's one of the function of that one. And then another, another thing that this car has come in that is much more appealing for all the drivers is the 4x4 button. Initially, we have a small gear that this should be so hard for somebody to engage. So right now, it's just a button. When you press it in and you move the button, 
it will come from high four to low four. So, like this car has a high four. Any car that you see with a high four and low four, it's a full time four by four. It's a full time four, four by four. four. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But when you see a car that has a H2, it's not a full time, it's a part time. Whereby, like for the, our pickups, it's a part time four by four. But a car with a H4 and a low four, this one is a full time. So, when you're moving this one, the knob, it's easy. So, anybody can move it up. Yes, and then also for the diff lock, it's just a button. You just press the button for the rear diff and the button for the center diff lock and you lock the car. So this car has been made now user friendly. Well, you don't struggle like with the gear to confirm is the gear on, you have to check on the dashboard because it's just a button. You move it like this and then you see your car will move up in front. Before you move on, the, for the layman who's out there, yes. you say the lower diff, yeah. higher diff. Just explain it to him how so that he understands. Yeah. What happens that um, if you're stuck in mud, for example, the road is much more like it has rained, maybe like on this black cotton and you are getting stuck. Mm -hmm. First of all, you'll move the knob to low four. Once you move the knob to low four, you lock first of all the rear differential. When you lock the rear diff, the instruction of the car now becomes high. Now you don't step now either on the fuel or on the brake. You only control the steering. The car will drive itself. When you feel like these two are not working, that's when you move to the center diff. So the center diff comes to a point where by now, you know, when you lock the rear diff, now the old, the, a lot of the traction is on the on the rear foot. That's why now they are dragging to move. So when that one is not working, now that's why now you move now to the center diff. So if you lock the center diff, now you have locked now the whole car all round. So both the front and the rear wheels, they are now moving now on, on a four wheel drive. So now the traction is much more high. It's as if there's a resistance, but the car is forcing to move. But we always advise, once you move from the mud, stop and remove the diff lock out. If you drive the car with the diff lock, you are going to damage your differential. Either the center and the rear differential, because there are two of them in the car. And uh, speaking about uh, families, uh, this is uh, also has been one of the pioneer brands for families and guys uh, driving families uh, with, the, with their Prado. Uh, just talk about uh, that aspect and uh, why should uh, also people with families look to this car for a vehicle to purchase or just to have. Yeah. One of the things about the family for the car, you know family sometimes you want to go for a picnic and you want to carry all your family. For example, maybe father, mother and four children. This car itself is a seven-seater. Now, for example, now the father is one driving, the mother will be here. You'll have three children at the back here, and then two more on the rear boot. And then also, if you have an, a, an infant, we have the ISO, ISO fix on the rear seat, so you can still mount them on. So the car, so first of all, the car is spacious. The car can carry seven people, which is a, a family car. It can carry the whole family at once. Even if you are, let's say, like if you have only a family of five, you'll have all the boot, boot space to carry people in behind there, so that one creates a space for you. If you have an infant, you have an ISO fix whereby you can, you can carry in your small child, you can lock in the seats for it not to be like a, for the kid to be safe because you know you're not allowed to carry a small an infant in the front seat because of the airbag suffocation. So basically that one makes the car a family car. So even if you're going on a game drive, also you have a sunroof whereby you can stand over here instead of coming out to be safe, you can be seeing the animals out there. So that's what makes the car now a family car. It can carry the whole family no matter the number and then all of you can enjoy comfortably. Yes. And uh, lastly, price. What, uh, what's the price and uh, what's the financial uh, packages that you offer for this car also? Yeah. What always happen is that, um, for me, before I go back to the price, yeah. I'll always tell you that um, the features, what the car can offer you, you know, yeah, the value of what the car will give you, it will supersede the, the price. And then for the Prado, we have a range. We don't have one. Now, like this one is the top top of the range, the VXL. As you can see even over here, you still have a cooler box. Mm -hmm. Whereby, well, for example, if you are traveling with your family and your kids and you want to carry their milk or even some beverages on the road, this is a cooler box. Mm -hmm. You still keep them safe. And then we have a lower version of the product call a TXL. Mm -hmm. So, they have, so the, the price of the car now ranges from 9.9 .9 million mm -hmm. up to 13.5 million. Yeah. So now it depends with which one fits your budget, yeah. which one fits your need. What's the difference between the one for 9 million and 13 million? Yeah. One thing that I'll tell you between the, the chassis for the car is the same, uh -huh. the engine is the same. Uh -huh. Now what comes up now is the little luxuries that come in with it. For example, like this car as I told you, it has an air suspension, KDSS. Mm -hmm. That one now makes your comfort better. That one now makes this one now 13.6 because of the comfort. It comes with pure leather seats, as you have seen. It comes with a cooler box. It has an intermittent wiper sensor. Well, but if it's raining and I have put my weapon on, on, the wipers will come on. You saw the headlight for this one, they're not the normal LED, the hyperbolic halogen. Well, but if you corner the light that hands with you, this one comes with parking sensors. In case you're parking on a blind spot, you'll be able to see. 
the car comes with four cameras. There's one at the back, one in front, and one on the side mirrors. Whereby even if you're parking on a blind spot, that's why now this one goes for that much. Now we have a TXL automatic and a TXL manual. The major difference between the two of them is that uh, for that one, for the TXL, you don't have a parking sensors. The seats are fabric. You don't have not like the intermediate wiper. The, wiper, the headlights are just the normal LED. They're not like this one, the advanced. The rim for that one is size 17, this one is size 18. So those are some of the changes. That's why now for that one, the TXL, which is the entry version of the Prado, now that one will cost you, automatic is 10.1, and manual is 9.7 million. Yes. That has been uh, the new Toyota VXL. Cheers and thanks for talking with us. You're welcome, sir. Thank you.